Today on A Search of Flavor, biscuits. They're good for breakfast, they're good for lunch, they're good for dinner. Hell, they're good all by themselves. Warmed up, slathered with a little bit of butter. Mm. Hey daddy-o, did somebody say biscuits? Uh, yeah, I did, Elvis, but it's gonna be a few minutes. So, stick around. And why don't you stick around as we examine the super tasty, ever flaky biscuit. The biscuit's been around a long time, but not always in the form that you or I may think of when we think of the word biscuit. I know growing up in the northeastern United States, when I think of the word biscuit, I think of one of these guys, flaky, hot, warm, slathered with butter. Biscuits, butter, biscuits, butter. <laughs> Easy there, big guy. That may be my life experience, but the original biscuit wasn't like that at all. It was a small, hard, flat cake. The word biscuit itself originates from the medieval Latin term biscotes, meaning twice cooked. It was called this because it was literally cooked twice in the oven, once inside of a tin and once outside of the tin. The original biscuits were really hard and really dry, and they needed to be because they were a food source for sailors to take out to sea. Hmm. I guess thinking about it like that, we could call it a sea biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> anyway, like I said, they were a food source for sailors and for soldiers who would just take them, stick them in their pocket, and eat them as they went throughout their day. They needed to be durable to withstand all that jostling in their pocket. In fact, during the time of Louis XIV, these original biscuits were called stone bread. Not exactly a very appetizing term. Before long, the uh, lowly biscuit made its way to American shores, and cooks in the South began to refine the recipe. Originally, they were only really served on Sundays and on special occasions, and were sort of considered a delicacy because the flour was hard to come by. Also, yeast was in short supply, so the cooks really had to work their dough in order to get some air into the dough so they would get a rise in the oven. Luckily today, we can have biscuits any day of the week, because they're easy to make. Biscuits? Oh, for the love of God. Biscuits fall into that category of baked goods known as quick breads. And if you watched our episode on banana bread, or our episode on carrot cake, <laughs> then you know what a quick bread is. It is a baked good leavened with chemical leaveners. Those leaveners being baking powder and baking soda. Both the powder and the soda are there to produce CO2 to give us a lift in the oven. But why in our recipe here for a biscuit do we need both baking powder and baking soda? Hmm, it's quite a, quite a chin scratcher. I think it's time for a visit to the lab. Hey doc, we're over here making biscuits in the kitchen, yum. <laughs> And uh, looking at the recipe, I see that we have both baking powder and baking soda. I know that baking powder has both an alkaline and an acid, so what, why do I need the soda? What gives? I bet there's buttermilk in your recipe, isn't there? Actually, yeah, there is. So what? You see, baking is all about balance. You have to keep things in balance, and if you don't, you are on the road to baking doom. Baking doom? Yes, baking doom. In order to avoid baking doom, you need to think about your recipe like a scorecard at a sports game. We want to keep things in balance. We always want the game to be a tie. So, in your recipe, you have baking powder. That's an acid and an alkaline. Each team scores a run, and we're tied. Good to go. Our recipe's in balance. But then we go and add our buttermilk. The buttermilk is only an acid. So acid scores a run, and alkaline does it. Now we've got a problem. We're no longer tied. We are out of balance. So the answer, of course, is baking soda. It brings an alkaline to the party, but no acid. And we are back in balance. This is what you need to do to keep your recipe from baking doom. Ah, good information. Anything else we should know, Doc? Yes, check the expiration dates often because your baking soda and baking powder will expire. Good to know, Doc. Thanks for the help. I love my biscuit, I love it so, I can't wait to eat it up. 
I tested a number of recipes while preparing for this episode. I used self-rising flour, all-purpose flour, cake flour, pastry flour, and a combination of all of these flours put together. The taste testers that I had were, well, my two teenage sons because they could eat a lot of biscuits and they're not going to end up obese while I've been on a diet for pretty much the last 20 years. Uh, regardless of which recipe we used, everybody thought that the biscuits were good. They were really good. But there was one that stood out among all of the others, and it was the biscuits prepared with the all-purpose flour. I suspect that the reason the kids liked them with the all-purpose flour was the fact that due to the higher protein content in the all-purpose flour, the uh, crumb of the biscuit was a little heartier and had a heartier mouthfeel. Whatever the case, they were all good. So, with all that said, let's get started with the biscuits. The first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 230 degrees Celsius if that's how you roll. The kitchen tools you're going to need include a mixing bowl, a whisk or a fork, a kitchen scale, measuring spoons, measuring cups, a sheet pan, and a two inch biscuit cutter. For the ingredients you are going to need, 12 ounces of all purpose flour, four teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, three quarters teaspoon of salt, one ounce of unsalted butter, two ounces of shortening, and one cup of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk at home, don't just leave out the buttermilk and substitute for regular milk. Don't do that, it's not gonna come out right. So what you wanna do is take your regular milk and we'll make some buttermilk. Here's how you do it. Take one cup of milk Add to it a tablespoon of lemon juice or white vinegar and let it stand on the counter for about 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, proceed with your recipe as normal. It's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be close enough and you're going to be able to go and make your biscuits. Yum. Okay, so to get started with our biscuits, we are going to add all of our dry ingredients to our mixing bowl. So into the bowl goes our flour, our baking powder, baking soda, and salt. And then we take out our whisk and just combine thoroughly. Okay, once we have it well mixed, we are going to grab our fat, that being the butter and the shortening, and we are going to add those guys into our flour mixture. We are now going to employ what's called the rubbed dough method. I've seen this called the biscuit method, but calling it the biscuit method doesn't make any sense to me. I know in this instance we're making biscuits, but you can use this method to make things other than biscuits. So to call it the biscuit method makes no sense. When I was taking classes at the Culinary Institute of America, they called this the rubbed dough method. So I'm sticking with the rubbed dough method. So the whole idea with the rubbed dough method is to use your fingertips I've seen people do this with a fork, with a spoon. They even make a tool called a pastry cutter that's supposed to help you do this. <laughs> I think the pastry cutter is actually just designed to separate you from your money, but that's just my opinion. I find that my hands work just fine and they're cheap. So what you wanna do is use your fingertips and work the fat into the flour and just squeeze it. Just continue to work it until you have no large pieces of fat left and your mixture looks uh, a, a, little, a little coarse. So the purpose of this is to coat the flour granules with fat. And the reason we wanna do that is that when we add our buttermilk to the mixture, we don't wanna create a lot of gluten. Gluten adds toughness to baked goods and for our biscuit, we want it to be nice and tender. So by doing this, we give each flour granule essentially a little raincoat to protect it from the buttermilk. So once we have it cut in like that, we essentially just make a little well in the center with our fingers and we pour in our buttermilk. Now using a large spoon or a spatula, we mix our buttermilk into the mixture. One thing we don't want to do here is overwork our dough because it'll make it tough. So we want to work it just enough to bring it together, just enough so we'll be able to take it, put it out on the counter and cut it into biscuits. That looks good to be. So now you just want to take a little bit of flour, dust your countertop, and then put this guy out on your counter. Once we have it out on the counter, we're just going to work it into a disc that's about a half an inch thick. Just very gently push it down. You don't want to work it now while it's on the counter 
because you're just going to make the biscuits tougher when, when they cook. That's about a half inch thick. Now I take my biscuit cutter and I have a little extra flour here. And what I want to do is just mix my biscuit cutter down in that flour so I can cut directly into the dough. And what you want to do is start at the very edge and push, push straight down. Don't turn while you're pushing down because you'll crimp the edge of the biscuit and it won't rise straight up. So straight down, once you hit to the counter, turn, pop it out. And there's our first biscuit. Oh, isn't it cute? You're going to put them right on a sheet pan. And you want them just touching shoulder to shoulder. You want to think like an elevator, not a crowded subway. Once we've cut all our biscuits from this piece of dough, what we do is take our waist here and just push it back together and just gently work that into another half inch layer and repeat. And just continue to do that until you're out of dough. Okay, so now with all of our biscuits on our baking sheet, what we're gonna do is right before we stick it in the oven, we wanna take our finger and just press into the center of each biscuit. And the reason we do this is if you think about it, the heat hits the biscuit from the outside in. So it's cooking from the outside in. So closest to the edge is gonna cook and rise first. So if we make a little dimple in the center, by the time it's done baking, we should have a flat top. Okay, into a 450 degree oven for these guys for 10 or 12 minutes. I'm gonna start checking them after 10 minutes to see if they're GBD or golden brown and delicious. Okay, there goes the timer, so let's get those guys out of the oven. And there we go. If all of you guys had smell a vision <laughs> So all we do now is move these off to a little basket lined with a tea towel, and it's time to feast. So there we go. A luscious basket of biscuits. Mmm, smell a vision. And I just put a little bit of butter. Because what could be better than butter at our butter milk biscuits? <laughs> what do you think, King? Way to go, Daddy O. Great biscuits. You got any Demerol to go with these? Uh, no. Just, just eat your biscuits. So I hope this video has given you the urge to go into your kitchen and create some delicious buttermilk biscuits, homemade. <laughs> uh, they're great for breakfast. You can make them with eggs and some sausage gravy. You could throw some meat on them or maybe a sausage for lunch. And certainly, one of my favorites, you could serve them with chicken stew for dinner. Yum. Hearty and filling. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you really liked it, why not go ahead and subscribe because we have new videos coming all of the time. And I would hate, hate for you guys to miss anything that's coming right here on In Search of Flavor. So, thanks for watching this video, and I am gonna go eat another biscuit. I'll see you guys around the interwebs. Thanks for watching. Go make yourself some biscuits, daddy-o. Go make yourself some biscuits.